Shalom. I'm Brother Tazaya Amar of GMS Valdosta, Georgia, coming out with another weekly lesson, and I pray that it be edifying. But first, we want to give all praises and glorifications to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rikakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS, Great Millstone, for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I want to say Shalom and Ahab to all the brothers and sisters that are striving and thriving in this same true doctrine. Shalom. Today's lesson is pretty much based upon what I call the three A's. The three A's. Adamant against adversity. You know, there's um, so many distractions and worldly situations that's going on now that can easily, you know, make you a little slothful in this work. You know, you got all kind of distractions and uh, mirth, bread and circus, you name it. You know, as we often say, hey, the devil is, co is constantly on his job. He never takes a day off. He never takes sick leave. With that, oh, speaking of the word adamant, as we like to do at Great Millstone, we like to look words up. And the word adamant is synonymous for being stubborn. Steadfast, hardened, obsessive, determined. And that's what we got to, in the, all those attributes, hey, we got to acquire those while we're in this walk, this spiritual walk. And um, as I was speaking about being slothful, which is, one of the attributes that I'm guilty of. If we're going to look up that word, slothful. Slothful is synonymous with being lazy, sluggish, or indolence, which is the avoidance of activity or exertion and for lack of a better word hey just just plain as lazy you know not putting in this work not to the best of your ability you know you you're not not performing up to par You know, as the scriptures say, hey, the Most High said that, hey, he'd rather you be cold or hot, but if you lukewarm, he will spew you out of his mouth. So, we're supposed to be on fire for this, for this word, for this mission that had been passed down to us. With that being said, I'm going to go to the word... Adversity. Adversity. A state of misfortune or affliction, which is synonymous with troubles, illness, hardships, miseries, etc. Hey. When we took on this task, this labor of love, all those situations came, came with it. You know, the scriptures say, hey, we counted the cost. If you didn't count the cost then, and you thought everything was going to be a, uh, a syrup train ride to Flapjack City, you were sadly mistaken. And with that being said, 
I'm going to go to my fresh scripture. It's going to be Hebrew chapter 6. Hebrew chapter 6. Hebrew chapter 6, verse, starting at verse 11. And in Hebrew chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do sure the same diligence to the fulfilled assurance of hope unto the end. You know, when we took on this labor of love, hey, it was a lifetime contract. You know, there was no fine print that say that, hey, I can resign or I can just do the work when I feel like it. Or I can take a vacation whenever I feel like it. Show up when I get ready. Pretty much, I'm speaking about camp, you know, uh, missing camp. Show up when I get ready, you know, two, three hours, well, an hour, 25 or 30 minutes late. Pretty much, no. I'm going to read that again. Hebrew chapter 6, verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. You know, this is nothing to play with. As I said, hey, you know, when we, when we, when we, when we signed on, this country, hey, this contract had a no quit clause. There was no fine print of, of, of any kind. It was a done deal, as they say. And with that, I'm going to move to the book. Well, I'm going to stay in the book of Hebrew. I'm going to drop down to verse 12. Hebrew chapter 6, verse 12. That ye be not slothful. There's that word, slothful. But follow of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You know, how do you expect to hey to achieve uh, salvation? You know, how you uh, do you think that you can just show up on a job and you know, uh, say for instance, if you're in a construction job or you're in an office job, you just show up and stand around with your arm fold up or go back and forth to the break room. You know, 30 minute breaks every five minutes. You know, what kind of result do you, what, what do you think they're going to lead to? You're going to get fired. Same thing about this, this job. You know, if you're not adamant about this job, hey, you're going to get fired. The most high take this job. And give it to somebody that really want it. And then there you are. You're in the unemployment line. Which is back out there in the world. With no hope. Let that sink in for a minute. My next scripture is going to be. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, starting at verse 25. Proverbs 21, verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hand refused to labor. You know, you. You got your destiny in the palm of your hand. What are you going to do with it?
Are you going to play with it or get with it? You know, the, the most high, how about Shem I was shy, ain't playing, because we in these, we, 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 we headed into some serious time. Some very serious time. And if you're not adamant, rooted, and grounded in, in this walk and in your faith, there's something that'll come that gonna come through. They're gonna derail that train you on. Let that sink in for a minute. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, starting at verse 26. He covers greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spare not. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. A false witness shall perish, but the man that hears speaketh constantly. You know, as I was as I mentioned earlier, you know, hey, this is a uh a, a job that hey, come with heavy consequences. You know, in it's been placed in your hand, and if you don't do it, hey, there's consequences that hey, I dare not even think about. You know, people often talk about um, bad luck, good luck. There's no such thing as luck. It's judgment. And like as I said earlier again, hey, the most high is not playing. This 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 is life and life or death. Which do you choose this day? With that being said, I'm going to move to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew, chapter 25, starting at verse 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said Lord I knew thee that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed verse 25 and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth lo there thou hast that has that is thine his Lord answered and said unto him that wicked and slothful servant. There's that word slothful again. That knew it that I reap where I sow not. And gather where I have not straw. That ought is therefore to have put my money to the exchanger. And then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away, even that which he has. You know, that go back to what I was speaking about earlier. You know, about hey, we have been given a task. We have been given Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai treasure. To pass it on. So that he'll increase. That he'll get the increase. We are to plant the seed and he received the increase. And if you don't plant the seed or you're not out there doing the work, what you think gonna happen whenever he comes to collect? 
Ain't gonna be pretty, is it? Not at all. Not at all. And with that being said, I'm gonna go to the book of Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter three starting at verse ten. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You know, as a young man raised by my grandfather, I used to hear him use that quote that all the time. And uh, he had a very adamant way of putting it. <laughs> Man don't, man don't work. Man don't eat. And he used to say that all the time. Now here it is. In the very book. That that quote come from. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. For even when we were with you. This we commanded you. That if any would not work. Neither should he eat. Just as bold as it can be. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. Working not at all. But are busy body. You know the time that it take out to be a busy body. You can very well be doing this work. But being a busy body. That, that comes from being distracted. You know, there's, as I was mentioned earlier, there's so many distractions out there. You know, a lot, you got the, uh, the sports, different types of entertainment, you know, this fanfare and mirth, bread and circuses, you know, uh, uh, promiscuous females, and the list goes on. But with that being said, I'm going to go to the book of Proverbs, close out with the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, starting at verse 6. Proverbs 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. There go that word again, sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You know, if you pay close attention to certain species of animal how they reinteract re with each other on a, on a level that if humans did that you know you, did you know how harmonious this place would be take for instance verse 7 Proverbs Chapter 6, verse 7. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. Here it is. These animals don't have, these insects, rather, um, specifically speaking about answers, but you can also apply this to the bees. They have a harmonious, uh, I guess you would call uh, their existence is harmonious. They have no kings. They have no rulers. They have no supervisors. They have no managers. They have no captains. They have no sergeants. Hey, everybody just do what they're supposed to do. They don't have nobody standing over their shoulder directing them or Making sure that they get their job done. Hey, they just do it. And that's the way we should be in this truth. In this walk. Shouldn't have anybody standing over us. For example. My camp leader shouldn't have to tell me that. Hey, 
Don't let that slug, that sluggish demon overtake you. Uh, you are, you need to be more uh, persistent in uh, being on time at camp. Uh, you know, wh whatever this walk calls for. No one should have to stand over your shoulder, advise you to do the thing that you know you're supposed to do. It should be automatic, instinct. And with that being said, I'm going to close out. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders for teaching us the true knowledge of these scriptures. I want to say Shalom and a hob to all the brothers and sisters that striving and striving in the same true doctrine. Shalom.